Someone said there's like a Kurz Gazette video that's that's really bad, so um, I really want to see this. Is civilization on the brink of collapse? All right, let's find out. Is it? I don't know. Kurz Gazette, please tell me. I need you to tell me. I must know. At its height, the Roman Empire was home to about 30% of the world's population. And in... Okay, that's good for them, I guess. Anyways, it was the pinnacle of human advancement. Its citizens enjoyed the benefit. Holy sh in many ways, it was the pinnacle of human advancement. Are you kidding me? The, like, like, average, like, 12-year-old. Average 12-year-old. Whoa, Roman Empire. So cool. Rich people have heating with 20 slaves. Bits of central heating, concrete, double glazing, banking, international trade, and upward social movement. You know, civilize. You know what? You know what? Everyone. You know what's fucking great? Banking. Upward social mobility. Are you fucking kidding me? This is like. Yeah. Don't worry. You could move up. You could move up in the world if your master like freed you. Like the guy who literally owned you decided to free you. Man, you could move up in the world a little bit, maybe. Ability. Rome became the first city in history with one million inhabitants and was a center of technological, legal, and economic progress. An empire impossible to topple, stable and rich and powerful. Until it wasn't anymore. First slowly, then suddenly, the most powerful civilization on earth collapsed. By civilization, we mean a comp- By civil- This is wrong. I hate, like, the, I hate the framing where they, they act like the Eastern Roman Empire was not in every respect a continuation of the Western. Yeah, it looked, it obviously looked incredibly different a thousand years later, but that's because that happens in every fucking polity ever. And the narrative of the fall of Rome too, Rome sacked by the evil, you know, perfect advance Rome sacked by the terrible evil barbarians who were also like functionally almost the same people by that point, whatever. We mean a complex society where labor is specialized and social classes emerge and which is ruled by institutions Civilizations share a ruled by institution Civilization like this is fucking this is what social classes emerge and which is ruled by institutions Civilization is when social classes and institutions like that they're, they're making this up as they go along here, man This is like this is what if alt his level this is a what if alt his video, but with a much bigger graphics and narration budget Civilizations share a dominant mutual language and culture and domesticate plants and animals to feed and sustain large cities where So if they share a dominant mutual language, does that mean like every single country that has a language only spoken there counts as their own civilization? Is there an Albanian civilization? Is that what we're saying here? We have Albanian civilization now. I mean, it's just like, just completely fucking winging it completely uncritically, but you can't expect much more from these people. They often construct impressive monuments. Civilization lets us become efficient on large scales, collect vast amounts of knowledge, and put human ingenuity and the natural resources of the world. Man, these guys would have fucking been the number one advocates for colonialism. Like, can you just imagine, Kuros, because that, like, this sounds like the intro to a video about, like, you know, right after this, it sounds like they're gonna fucking say, and that's why we need to invade North America. And... That is why we have the divine right to take Australia from the Aboriginal people. It really, it just seems like an ad for fucking Europe being superior or whatever. And they're not even being subtle about it. Like, on the map they showed Europe, they haven't even, like, put, like, a token Asian poop person in there to talk about, like, India or China or anything. It's all Europe. To work. Without civilization, most people would never have been born. Which Good. makes it a bit concerning that collapse is the rule, not the exception virtually all civilized no this fucking book again are you kidding me oh ha, ha. let me like the book about like the um the link like the average link of civilizations made by a guy who measured the average link of so-called civilizations by like arbitrarily deciding what and what wasn't a civilization based on how convenient it was for him to spin them as lasting for a certain amount of time and he and he got it completely wrong here it is here it is that source for this is um paper called the the measure of civilization no, a book called the measure of civilization anyone who writes books like this needs to be soil and greened in my opinion Hold on, there was a good post. I, I, I'm trying to find a critique of this, this idiotic idea that is what spawned this sort of, this, this narrative that civilizations last for X amount of time, which was basically like Europeans just looking back at the world and saying random, this, this lasted for the amount of time that I want it to, or this constitutes a civilization, but this other thing that doesn't abide by the, the, the thing that I'm saying doesn't. 
Ah, here it is. Here is the post that I was looking for. Yeah, that empire's only last 250 years. What does this one say? Stations end on average after 340 years. Pr practically, practically the same thing. This is so stupid because, like, they say these these are civilizations, right? And they apparently ended after 300 years. What do you think? The Roman Empire fell, and there was no more civilization. No, no one lived in what was previously the Roman Empire anymore. For for the like 99% of people who lived there, everything went went on exactly the same as it had before, and everyday life continued. Changing whoever's in charge doesn't mean that like the civilization is over. What the fuck is this? The civilization ended? No, not a single one of these was a civilization ending. It was just like a certain state or empire or kingdom collapsing and, and losing its control. That's th not what a civilizational collapse means. And the, the, original, the original source of this was this idiotic book called The Fate of Empires and the Search for Survival by Sir John Bagot Glubb. What a fucking name. He wasn't even a, he wasn't even a real historian. The answer, one of the, one of the people who responded said that the book isn't taken seriously at all. Yeah, it just goes into a bit how, like, it doesn't make, like, you know, he tries to spin things to fit the idea that he already had in his head that 250 is the, you know, the amount of years that it must be. Like, calling any of this civilizational collapse is incredibly fucking iffy. It's, it's, it's like, in, like, civilizational collapse would imply... Not that, like, a certain state collapsed. It would imply that, like, after the state collapsed, everything just stopped fucking working. Everyone fucking died. And, like, everything was just fucking barren where it used to, where it used to rule. That's not what fucking happened. Maybe in a couple of... Maybe in a couple of places, like the city of Rome itself, but certainly not in the Rome. They were ruled over by them. Like, I fucking hate this ahistorical garbage to peddle a narrative. Oh, knowledge is lost, living standards fall, violence increases, and often the population declines. The civilization... And their source for this is one idiotic book by, you know, the, the typical sort of, sort of guy doing like grand, big, big history that is based on like practically nothing. Like the idea that we know how many people lived in settlements, 6,000 6, 5, 6, BC, 5,000 BC, 4,000 BC. The idea that we know any of this with any level of certainty at all is fucking absurd. But people just go and write entire books based off throwing out random fucking numbers and use that to like say, hey, hey guys, civilizations last about 300 years. That's all. Like, what are you fucking talking about, man? If you live anywhere in Europe right now, anywhere in like East Asia, you live in a place where there has been quote unquote civilization. Basically anywhere in the fucking world, really. You live in a place where there has been civilization for like thousands upon thousands of years continuously. Really, it's, it's modern world brain. Modern world brain where like a political entity collapsing, its rule collapsing is equivalent to like a fucking collapse of civilization somehow either completely disappears, is absorbed by stronger neighbors, or something new emerges. Sometimes with more primitive technology than before. If, if it's absorbed by stronger neighbors, then civilization never, never collapsed. This is how it's been over the ages. What about us today? Are they going to answer the question? Just the as title? Europeans forgot how to build indoor plumbing and make cement, will we lose our industrial technology? And with that, our greatest achievement... This is like the, the classic Dark Ages narrative. It's not like Europeans forgot how to do certain things after the fall of the Roman Empire. It's more that the people who did that, who had those things in the Roman Empire, were filthy fucking rich slave owners who all lived in Rome itself. And that was not the average experience of the person who lived under Roman rule. Achievements from $1 pizza to smartphones or laser eye surgery, would all this go away too? Today, our cities stretch for thousands of square kilometers. We travel the skies. Our communication is instant. Industrial agriculture with engineered high-yield plants, efficient machinery, and high-potency fertilizer feeds billions of people. Modern medicine gives us the longest lifespan we've ever had, while industrial technology gives us an unprecedented level of comfort and abundance. All this is incredibly bad. And this only applies, by the way, to like 10% of the people in the world maximum. We have an unprecedented level of comfort and abundance. Like, they literally talk to the audience, assuming that every single one of them is like a white first worlder. It's fucking shameless, man. I went over this in my other video response to them, but it's really hitting home here that to them, the entire fucking world is like Amsterdam or something. They can't conceive of anything else. Even though we haven't yet learned to attain them without destroying our ecosphere. 
there are arguably still different civilizations around today that compete and coexist with each other, but together they also form a singular global civilization. But this modern globalized civilization is even more vulnerable. I'm just like throwing out this word civiliz civilization, 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 civilization. In some ways than past empires because we are much more deeply interconnected. A collapse of the industrialized world literally means that the majority of people alive today would perish since without industrial agriculture, we would no longer be able to feed them. Without industrial agriculture, I mean, not particularly, hopefully the first rulers would die, though we all know that wouldn't be the case. Agriculture, even before the Industrial Revolution was, you know, had fairly decent yields. I mean, a lot of people would die, not like everyone, probably not the people in the first world that these people um, are trying to appeal to, though. So maybe now they're suddenly like indirectly acknowledging this is the existence of the third world. And there's an even greater risk. What if a collapse was... Cuba, for example, post-revolution for like 30 years, produced most of its own food with fucking oxen and shit plowing the fields, with very few tractors, with very few industrial level m machines. So it is possible to sustain a fairly large population without like fucking tractors and shit, though obviously it's undesirable. So deeply destructive that we were unable to re-industrialize again. What if it ruined our chances of enjoying a flourishing future as a multi-planetary species? Wait, wait, isn't the video, isn't civilization, is it on the, it, it's like a question, is civilization on the brink of collapse? And it sounds like they're more asking, what would happen if civilization collapsed, which, you know, whatever the fuck that's even supposed to mean, it's not, it's not the question that they were asking in the title, right? A global civilizational collapse could be an existential catastrophe, something that ruins not just the lives of everyone alive today, but all the future generations that could have come into being. Based. All the knowledge we might have discovered, the art we might have created, the joys we might have experienced would be lost. So, how likely is all of this? Let's start with some good news. Like, the, the, apparently, like, the worst part about everyone in the world potentially dying is that there's no more art. Ah, oh, man. While civilization collapses have happened regularly, none have ever derailed the course of global civilization. Rome collapsed, but the Aksumite Empire, or the Teotihuacans, and of course... Yeah, because it wasn't a civilizational collapse. The collapse of the Roman Empire just meant that, like, the city of Rome itself declined a little bit. Do you think that everyone else everywhere just died? They just all fucking immediately died? Like, it, this is just incomprehensibly stupid, the framing. The Byzantine Empire carried on. What about sudden population crashes? So far, we've not seen a catastrophe that has killed much more than 10% of the global population. No pandemic, no natural disaster, no war. The last clear example of a rapid global population decrease was the Black Death, a pandemic of the bubonic plague in the 14th century that spread across the Middle East and Europe and killed a third of all Europeans and about one-tenth of the global population. If any event was going to cause the collapse of civilization, that should have been it. But even the Black Death... The, the collapse... How could... How could a disease epidemic in Europe itself cause the collapse of civilization? Global civilization? That? That would be it? Pandemic epidemic in Europe? That? Uh, that would be enough? Do you... Does the rest of the world exist for you, Kurz is that? Is there any... Is there any other place in the world that... That exists? To you? Jesus, man. ...straits humanity's resilience more than its fragility. While the old societies were massively disrupted in the short term, the intense loss of human lives and suffering did little to negatively impact European economic and technological development in the long run. Population size recovered... Yeah, they're like, this is everything about them is like, let's lord European history. Europe was great. Like, if they made a video on colonialism, it would be, po it would be a positive spin, 100%, 100%. But within two centuries, and just two centuries later, the Industrial Revolution began. History is- How- well, how did the Industrial Revolution began, begin? From profits generated from slavery in, um, British sugar colonies in the Caribbean. Kinda, kind of, um, important to, um, insert that fact in there. You know, it wasn't just, like, European ingenuity. You know, good old European ingenuity helped us to recover from the Black Death. No, it was, um, mass slavery. On, on a scale that allowed British capitalists to invest into industrial level machinery in factories. It allowed them to take more risks than ever before, and that funded the Industrial Revolution. So, pretty interesting tidbit for you there. It's full of incredible recoveries from horrible tragedies. Take the atomic bombing of Hiroshima during World War II. 140,000 people were killed, and 90% of the city was at least partially incinerated or reduced to rubble. But against all odds, they made a remarkable recovery. 
Hir this is like, it's like they just don't explain anything. It's like Hiroshima was bombed and destroyed and then it was rebuilt. Yeah, because in exchange for Japan's everlasting fealty, the people who bombed it rebuilt it or they at least contributed copious amounts of capital, of materials, etc. to enable that to happen. There's just literally no context at all in this. It's like, oh, remarkable. Civilization was destroyed and just 10 years later, it cropped up again because the US exploited the ever-loving fuck out of Japan, forcing them- White rights, of course. Essentially to use American loans that they had no other option but taking on buying American materials to rebuild their own country that was destroyed. Civilization wiped out 10 years later, crops back up, wow. I wonder why. Is it because, like, perhaps the world, a world exists outside of just Hiroshima, right? So actually civilization didn't collapse at all. It was just a city being rebuilt. Like, is that, I, 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 like, none of the examples that they've used are even remotely an example of the thing that they've been claiming that they are. It makes no sense. Hiroshima's population recovered within a decade, and today it's a thriving city of 1.2 million people. Wow, if you don't civil civilization, CIA, you do you civilization trust. recovered, as you can see. But this made these horrible events any less horrible for those who lived through them. But for us as a species, these signs of resilience are good news. Why recovery is likely even in the... That makes no sense. Like, even in the worst case, they say? Worst case. That is not the worst case. It's one city that was destroyed while most of the rest of the world was still intact, especially the USA was still intact. Even most of Japan was still intact. You ask the fucking question of how was Hiroshima rebuilt? Because it's not an example of anything even remotely resembling a civilizational collapse. What the fuck? Ah, oh, man. This is just such One thing a that's different from historic collapses is that humanity now has unprecedented destructive power. Today's nuclear arsenals are so powerful that all out global war could cause a nuclear winter and billions of deaths. Our this is like the, 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 the like happy go lucky music right now is fucking amazing for this. Knowledge of our own biology and how to manipulate it is getting so advanced that it's becoming possible to engineer viruses as contagious as the coronavirus and as deadly as Ebola. Increasingly, the risk of global pandemics is much higher than in the past. So we may cause a collapse ourselves, and it might be much worse than the things nature has thrown at us so far. But if, say, 99% of the population died, would global civilization collapse forever? Could we recover from such a tragedy? We have some reasons to be optimistic. I I kind of I kind of pegged them on this, didn't I? I I I absolutely pegged them on this. They tried to positively spin climate change catastrophe that is essentially going to result in hundreds of millions, if not billions, of deaths, particular people in the third world. They tried to spin that as a positive thing, not not so much as a positive thing, but as something that you shouldn't worry too much about, right? Good news, we're going to solve climate change. Sure, hundreds of millions or billions will die, but don't feel down about it. Whatever you do, don't feel down about it, Western man. And they literally just said, like, I don't even have to spin this. They just fucking said right there that, Sean, if 99% of the human population dies, we have some reasons to be optimistic. This, like, ne neoliberal spinning everything ever as, as like a positive, as a good thing, is it's out of control. It's out of fucking control. Honestly, it's like, it's like those fucking... Articles that you see in like the New York Times and shit, the opinion pieces, like how a new Great Depression actually wouldn't be so bad. It's that sort of thing. It's so fucking ridiculous, man. These guys just, they like, they love to tell you about how you shouldn't, you shouldn't worry about absolutely horrible things that are going to kill countless people all the time. They, they are obsessed with it, man. Let's start with food. There are 1 billion agricultural workers today, so even if the global population fell to just 80 million, it's virtually guaranteed that many survivors would know how to produce food. And we don't need to start at square one, because we could still- Feels like he supports the Holocaust. Why is this a video? Why is this- 
German state-funded neoliberal propaganda channel, like seriously entertaining the idea of a complete 99% wipeout of the human population. Is this like a, like, soft advocacy for eugenics or something? It's like soft, I mean, they, they also have made a video advocating for population control in Africa before. So, this is really on brand. This is so Wait, fucking right, weird, like, why is this a video? Like, this is the sort of thing that you would make. You would think you'd make, we don't have any ideas, but this is like a 50-man team. This is a full production studio with researchers, writers, everything. This is the best idea that you could come up with for a video. Like, guys, if 99% like of, of the, the world Holocaust. population died, don't worry. We, we could recover one day. You know, you might die. But I hope you find some solace in the fact that, you know, a thousand years in the future, maybe the survivors will still be around. I hope that makes you feel better. This is unfucking believable To use modern high-yield crops. Maize is ten times- What are the comments? Yeah, there's like, one comment says, It's harrowing that ha how we've gone from, Hey, humanity's doing all kinds of things to help secure our future, it's not all bad, to, Hey, not all of us will die, we're like cockroaches. And this guy doesn't blame the channel for it, but... That narrative is specifically, it's, it's, these, it's these guys' thing. Their thing is to basically just fucking lie about how bad things really are to try and whitewash them. And if they can't lie about them, to try and tell you that, don't worry, it's all actually going to be okay, even when it clearly fucking isn't. Don't worry, guys. Have kids, because they might be one of the 1% of people who survive the apocalypse. ...bigger than its wild ancestor. Ancient tomatoes were the size of today's peas. After agriculture, okay. the next step towards recovery would be rebuilding industrial capacity like- Like, hey guys, did you know that um, humans domesticated wild plants? Yes. Like, why? Why? Oh man, this, this is so nonsensical. This is like the, the essence of a gish gallop. It's just throwing a bunch of shit at you. They did the exact same thing in the video that I critiqued on my main channel too. Power grids and automated manufacturing. A huge problem is that our economies of scale make it impossible to just pick up where we left off. Many of our high-tech industries are only functional because of huge demand. And the music is just so not fitting. You should have like fucking horror music, like a horror drone, like a joker droning in the background, like ding, like what the fuck is this? And intensely interconnected supply chains across different continents. Even if our infrastructure were left unharmed, we would make huge steps backwards technologically. But then again, we are thinking in larger time frames. Industrialization originally happened 12,000 years after the agricultural revolution. So if we need to start over after a massive collapse, it shouldn't be that hard to reindustrialize, at least on evolutionary timescales. There's a hitch though. The in Don't worry guys, 99% of the human population might die, but the 1% who survive, 12,000 years later, they might do slavery in the Caribbean and develop capitalism again. Never fear. They will have iPhones again, eventually. I... this... I mean, it speaks for itself. I need to stop interrupting, man. The industrial revolution was fueled literally by burning easily accessible coal, and we are still very much reliant on it. If we use it all up today, aside from making rapid climate change much worse, we could hinder our ability to recover from a huge crisis. So we should stop using easy to access coal, so it can serve as a civilization insurance in case something bad happens. We should stop using coal, so that if 99% of the human population dies, the people who survive could have some coal left to industrialize again? That is the worst argument against coal use I have ever heard in my life! Wow, this is absurd! There's no fucking way that they got this from anywhere. They must have made this up themselves. It's so fucking, it's so like, this is, this is from the mind of a sociopath. What the fuck? It, it seems like an original argument that they came, they came up with him based on other shit from what I'm seeing here, but this is absolutely incredible. Whoa. Guys, we need a, a secret coal reservation. We need to keep it there so that when, when the world collapses, they can reindustrialize off coal again. They can do the same shitty thing again. Please. Another thing that makes recovery likely is that we'd probably have most of the information we need to rebuild civilization. We would certainly lose a lot of crucial institutional knowledge, especially on hard drives that nobody could read or operate anymore. But a lot of the technological, scientific, and cultural knowledge stored in the world's 2.6 million libraries would survive the catastrophe. The post-collapse survivors would know what used to be possible, and they could- This is honestly, it's just like, 
This is the sort of thing that, like, someone who wants to make, like, a really shitty post-apocalyptic movie would make because they couldn't get the green light to make the movie, so they just pretend- they just framed it as an educational video instead that isn't actually educational at all. Is that just entirely based on fucking wild, idiotic speculation, and that is also completely pointless aside from to try and make people comfortable with the idea that they and everything they love and everyone they love might die. Like, this is- this is ghoulish as fuck reverse engineer some of the tools and machines they'd find. In conclusion, despite the bleak prospect of catastrophic threats, natural or created by ourselves, there is reason for optimism. Humankind is remarkably resilient, and even in the case of a global civilizational collapse, it seems likely that we would be able to recover, even if many people were to perish or suffer immense hardship, even if we lost cultural and technological achievements in the process. But given the stakes, the risks are still unnervingly high. Nuclear war and dangerous pandemics threaten the amazing global civilization we have built. Humanity is like a teenager, speeding around blind corners, drunk without a seatbelt. The good news is that it's still early enough to prepare for and to mitigate these risks. We just need to actually do it. We made this video together with Will McCaskill, a professor of philosophy at Oxford and one of the founders of the effective altruism movement. Oh my god, it's a, it's a fucking liberal guy who advocates for charity. It's a fucking liberal guy who advocates for charity as like the, the, that's, you can already tell what effective altruism means just by the context. Oh my god, like a charity as like, um, the end all be all of saving the world or whatever. This shit sucks. This shit fucking blows. I cannot fucking believe that anyone would willingly put their name to this. Unbelievable. Which is about doing the most good you can with your time and money. Will just published a new book called What We Owe the Future. Yeah, like, effective altruism is based on like individual, individual consumers fixing everything rather than, you know, state or, or like massive societal level projects to, to fix things. It's exactly the sort of thing that a neoliberal propaganda channel would love. About how you can positively impact the long-term future of our world. If you like- This, this channel is all based around trying to tell anxious first world consumers who are worried about the future of the world that they shouldn't worry. They need to just, you know, like worry about their carbon footprint and buy a, a, a different brand of hummus to end the Israeli occupation of Palestine. Probably not even that because they are German. We all, we all know they love Israel. But like, this is fucking unbelievable. No, it's not unbelievable at all. This is, this is what you expect from Kurzgesagt. Kurzgesagt videos, the chances are high you'll like it. The book has yeah, some this channel, this channel's basically every, like 90% of their videos that aren't just talking, that aren't just butchering like fairly inconse inconsequential science are about talking about like a massive problem, trying to frame it as not as not a hugely bad thing or downplaying it, and then proposing solutions that are all neoliberal consumerist capitalist ones that will not that are already not working and obviously will not work more in the future. That's their MO. Intuitive arguments like that risks from new technologies such as AI and synthetic biology are at least as grave as those from climate change or that the world doesn't contain too many people, but too few. And especially that everyday action biology are at least a future, which is about how you can positively impact the long-term future of our world. If you like Kotzkazak videos, the chances are high you'll like it. The book has some pretty counterintuitive arguments, like that risks from new technologies such as AI and synthetic biology are at least as grave as those from climate change. Holy shit, that is, that is like one of the most obviously untrue things you could ever say. Like we are so far from developing anything even resembling that level of AI that like, you know, climate change will prevent that from ever happening if it's even possible. Like what the fuck are you talking about, man? Or that the world doesn't contain too many people, but too few. And especially that everyday actions like recycling or refusing to fly just aren't that big a deal compared to where you donate or what career you pursue. Like guys, your, your, your carbon footprint isn't that big of a deal. What you really need to do is donate to the right charities. It's the same fucking thing, just like a different aspect of the same fucking thing. All of this is stupid as fuck. Most importantly, it argues that by acting wisely, you can help make tomorrow better than today. And how we together can build a flourishing world for the thousands- We together? No, you're not advocating for anything to do with people together. They're trying to make it look like it, but they're not. They're arguing for shit like individual career choices. Individual workers don't fucking dictate the overall direction of an economy. They're cogs, you know, in a, in a greater machine. That's fucking absurd. And then like, donations. That is not working together. 
that's advocating for individualistic like the appearance to an individual that they're making uh, they're making a change when they're obviously really not going to be doing anything because these are things that need to be tackled with a ho much higher level of societal organization not just convincing a bunch of people to donate and you know to work for a better company that is greener or whatever like give me a fucking break man this shit is garbage it's all millions of generations that will come after us Many things we at Kurzgesagt talk about regularly are discussed here in much greater detail. Check out <laughs> What We Owe the Future wherever you get your books or audiobooks. No, I won't. Did we manage to unlock a new fear for you? No, shut the fuck up. Look, this channel, this channel is neoliberal individualism manifest. Simplistic solutions to absolutely fucking massive society threatening problems simplistic solutions that are always encouraging neoliberal consumerist solutions rather than massive systemic change that is actually the massive systemic systemic change that is actually needed that channel is everything that the neoliberal ideologues who founded who like you know came up with the strategy going forward for neoliberalism in fucking Mont Pelerin and shit it's everything that they ever dreamed of in one youtube channel it, it's that bad Incredible stuff, man.